Hey everyone, I wanted to make a quick video today just going through my processes of uh, finishing up the little friction folders. Um, I have a handful of gnats to get finished. I got, I think, maybe seven or eight of them. So, hoping to get them all knocked out. And uh, I got the blade, or the, the blades are all, they're all grinded, ready for finishing. So, I, I'll show you guys my process on that. And then, um, Got the handles all cut out this week um, on the CNC. So some various G10 Rich Light. Uh, I don't know if I did any of my Cardo ones. Or I don't think I did. Um, so I'll show you what I do to finish it up those finish up those coupons after I get them off the mill, and then uh, you know down to some finishing work, some um, you know the assembly and sharpening and all, and all that kind of thing. So I'll kind of see how far I get today with all of them. And then I might just put up a brief video or I might wait until I get them all done. So um, thanks again for everyone tuning in and I hope you guys are liking these videos. All right, so one of the things that I do, um, I have this, this Scotch-Brite wheel in which I, I need a new one. This one's pretty, pretty well cooked. But what I do is after I get the blades all, after I get them all grinded, this up here um, I usually go through and I'll, I'll deburr all the edges and, and everything uh, just so you know when you're handling it it's it's nice and smooth I typically don't like tumble these until the edges are knocked down just because I don't like the way it gets rid of the the, the grind line at the top and it kind of smooths them a little too much so I'll do that I'm gonna knock this edge off on the scotch bright and then I gotta go over and chamfer these little holes. Anyone that tuned into the to the culprits, I pretty much do it the same way, just with that single flute countersink. But uh, some of the some of the tough stuff it takes a while. I'll just do these little time lapses just to get a little bit more content in the video. So here we go. All right, so to keep it kind of real and a little uncut, I did my steps backwards. I'm just gonna leave it like that just to show you that accidents are okay and they happen. Um, I, I typically like do the chamfering first and then blast everything. So now I blasted all the blades, then I chamfered them. Now I gotta take them back in and just blast blast the sides where it's it's kind of shiny again just to get the little bit of burr off. And then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna etch these. All right, welcome back to my laboratory here. I saved you guys the pain of watching me do zip ties on all of these. So I do this just similar to how I uh, did the culprits, put a little zip tie on them, it keeps them from when they're in a the tumbler from sliding against flat to flat and then not, not tumbling on the sides. Uh, so this is what I do. I take some real high tech um, tongue depressors here uh, create a little bridge across my my etch uh, and what I use for my solution is uh, ferric chloride mixed with um, some white vinegar and a little bit of uh, distilled water so it's like a I do pretty much like an 80% maybe 75% ferric and then whatever the dip, you know more vinegar than water but everyone's got their thing or whatever and uh, that just seems to be what works for me and what I'll do is I use these, I got a couple of them here that I use at various times. Just um, some titanium rod, it's similar to what I use to anodize with. And the ferric uh, does nothing to it, so you can soak it down in there. So I'll just kind of hang, I'll hang one off of this and kind of give it a dunk. And I'll just agitate it a little bit just in case there's any little like bubbles and any little nooks and crannies. Because sometimes you'll get that if you don't do that, you'll pull it out and the blade will be black and then there'll be a couple bubbles on there like in the in this jimping on the back or something and um, there'll be a space that didn't get hit so i do that a little bit and then i'll prop it up on the on the tongue depressor there and i won't make you guys watch all this but give you an idea now i usually let these sit in there for like 
you know, five minutes or something, well, maybe a little bit longer. Then I'll, uh, I'll pull them out, I'll neutralize them in Windex and toss them in the tumbler. So I'll do a, do a little time lapse for you there. We'll cut away here. All right, I got the blades in the tumbler and I don't let them go too, too long. So I'm gonna pull one out here in a second, uh, clean it up, take a look at it and see if it's see if it's where I want it. Obviously, the longer you let it tumble, the more of the, the edge comes off, the black comes off. Um, so we don't, we we want that look. We want a kind of dark, kind of kind of rustic look to it. So I'm just gonna tumble them a little bit, get them out. And then uh, when, I, when I take them out of the tumbler, I'll, I'll rinse them off and then I'll take a look, take an air chuck <clears throat> excuse me take an air chuck and just blow them off to get the water off them just that way you know there's not a bunch of water sitting on them and i'll snip the snip the zip ties off and then i'll i'll soak them in some wd-40 then i'll let that let that soak a little bit then i'll clean them up see where they're at and uh, at that point some of them sometimes i'll just take them and throw them on the surface grinder hit the flats and give that little two-tone look just to mix it up that way they're not just all acid stone washed but uh, I'll uh, keep you guys updated here. All right, we got them, got them soaking in some oil here. They turned out just as I wanted them to. I don't think that I'm gonna do any satin flats on them. Uh, I like that w whenever I do this look, I like to leave, like I, I finished the bevels at like 120 and, and so the flats pretty much close to the same. Cause I like the grind line showing a little bit with the with the tumble it just gives it like a rough a rough finish which i think this is what we're after um i know i i used to and some people will take them you know up to 600 or something and then that way you don't see any of the grind lines and i and i get that you know but to each their own i do stuff like that too like when i when i use the zer blast you you don't want to see grind lines through that so i take it to you know about 400 then I blast them up. But this is the look we're going for on these, kind of that gritty, rough, rough look. All right, so I got three coupons here off, off my Tormach. Um, that's how I do all my handles for the most part. Um, here's some orange G10. I got some rich light. It's like a black and brown layered. Um, you can kind of see it a little bit on the edges. And then this uh, OD green and black alternating G10. So what I do now is I, I run these through the blast cabinet, get it, get off any little, uh, any little burrs and stuff, all this kind of, um, all the little frays and whatnot. And then um, from there, I will, I'll cut them out on the bandsaw here. And then I'll take a, I'll take one of my 3 16th pivots and put it through the lanyard hole and the, and the pivot sandwich them together. And then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll profile those on my grinder. So the way they're nice and even and, um, yeah, just knock down any the edges with sandpaper and pretty much oil them up. And there's not too, not too much. Uh, the CNC cuts a lot of the, a lot of the work out there, but also, um, it gets everything precise. You know, all my counter bores are set uh holes are where they need to be so that's that all right so here's what i was talking about i just got two two random pivots here got them through and this allows me to keep them together and then I can uh, just profile off these tabs and round the round the edges a little bit so there's no hot spots. So I'll do that to all these guys and then uh, get them get them soaking in some oil. All right, everyone, thanks for tuning in so far. Um, so far, I've got pretty much everything done. Uh, I have finished in entirety um, 
just one set of the one set of the handles just to just to be able to put this assembly video together and show you guys some of the some of the hardware that I use, uh, some some various tools that I've found helpful. And I mean, it sounds simple putting together a friction folder, but I think the components, they, they were all a little difficult whenever I first started figuring out what size what and what goes together with what and, and just all the little variables that, that is just to put it together. So hopefully this helps you guys, gives you guys a little look inside of what, what goes into each of these little guys. Um, but yeah, let's get right into it. All right, here's one of the blades that I pulled and I decided to do a couple of these with um, some satin, like some, some coarse satin bevels and a little swedge on them. And then I got a set of these rich light handles all put together. I really like how this stuff turns out. Um, what I do up here to get this kind of speckle is I just blast this part a little longer and it'll show like the next layer pretty quick. So that's what I'm going to put together there. And then uh, as far as all the hardware, I'm just going to go through how I do this. I'm not going to actually put it together. I might do like a little quick time lapse of it, but I figured how it goes together um, and what with was a little bit more important than actually seeing it go together. Um, I get my pivots, these steel pivots from uh, Steve Kelly from tieconnector.com. And I just blasted these to give them that kind of rough look to go with these scales. I also got a little titanium standoff, um, also from, from Steve Kelly, tie connector. And then that goes at the tail end, right, right in front of the, the lanyard hole. And I got this, uh, this is what I use for my stop pin. It's just a little standoff from uh, McMaster. And then I have, you can't see them here, but I got four little um, 256 screws that I use. This is some coated steel ones. And then uh, here's the drivers I use. I think these are, um, I might have got these from, from either uh, Tom Crine or Lucas Burnley. Uh, the Scout leather drivers, these things are awesome. I like the, the fact that you can just stand them up. You don't have to sit them down. And so get them out of the way. This is important, some, uh, some thread locker. I like the blue, it's, it's removable, but it's still, keeps everything from from coming undone so I use a little bit of that on all my threads uh, so this tool is from uh, Alan Elishwitz and I forget what he called it is the e-tool um, yeah so this cuts a, a various number of different uh, different size screws I don't know what exact I think uh, like 440s 256 I don't remember what the what the tiny ones are um, I'm not like a, a big time machinist or anything, so I don't, I don't I'm not, I can't tell by looking at it, but yeah, it'll do, it'll cut, I think three 256 screws and it just shears them off. So I don't know if you can see in there, but this thing's awesome. Um, it just, it just saves so much time. You just, if the screws are a hair too long, you just thread them in, snip, snip them off. And it's got, he's got these little dimples up here for setting like detent detent balls and folders. So this thing has been extremely helpful. Um, another tool that I like to use is uh, from Tie Connector, this little um, screw plate, I guess you would call it. I'm not sure exactly what he calls it, but it has all the different size, um, all the different size screws on there marked, um, you know, what threads and these up here just for the pivot and barrels to slide through. So you can, you know, blast the, blast the heads of them you know, that's what I do for all my 256s. I'll blast them and it is titanium too. So I use it to anodize. If I'm doing like a group of stuff, it, it just makes it super slick. Uh, if you don't have this tool, I know there's some people that'll use this and run the threads through and just like kiss the, kiss the threads on the grinder to, to shave them down. So that's a, that's a really useful tool. Um, I don't know if he has any of these on his website or not, but you shake him down. He's one of the one of the best guys in the community, in my opinion, as far as communication goes. Um, you order something from him, it, you're getting tracking in like 30 seconds. So he, he's on top of it. So, but that's that. Um, extremely helpful, both of those tools. Um, yeah, that's it. I mean, just to look over the scale real quick. 
you know, I, right here is where I put my um, little stop pin with two, two of the 256 screws on each side, a little bit of thread lock. And then right here is where the standoff goes, the 256 screw on both sides, and then that's just a lanyard hole. And then, um, yeah, obviously the pivot. And actually one thing I forgot to, to bring over is I use uh, phosphor bronze washers on these. So they, um, I, I just like how, how they work, how they feel with open and closing. I just put a little drop of oil on them. They're good to go. But I'll, uh, I'll just do a little time lapse here assembling this and then uh, wrap it up, get it, get it sharpened, and we'll uh, be on our way. that little fella all together now we'll get it get it sharpened up okay here's my uh this is a i think it's amk 75 it's a one by 30 uh sharpener so it takes one by 30 belts, and I, I use mainly a 120, um, a 400, and, and just a paper strop. That seems to work for, for what I like for my edges. Uh, I'll wrap the spine with like a piece of cardstock or paper, and then clamp them in into one of these, and then they just rest on this bar here. You can set that to whatever angle you want your, your edge to be, and then you know it's a consistent angle the whole time. Do one side, flip it over, knock your burrs down. And I have two of those just to, so I can knock out two at a time uh, with each grit. This makes it nice, a little more efficient, but yeah, things pretty sweet. It, it has different speeds. You can set it on a couple different speeds. That's that. that's that got it all put together here got it sharpened gonna get some pictures of it um, hopefully that that little video was helpful to someone and if not hopefully you at least enjoyed the to see the process of it, um, it it's kind of fun to go through it and break it down you kind of almost don't know what's really involved with everything until you break it down like that um, so there's a good bit I mean even though like I said even though they're small they're tedious little guys and um, yeah, I got the rest of them to, to get cleaned up and get put together, get them all sharpened. So I'm thinking I'm thinking maybe Friday at this point, I'll probably have have a few available. This one, um, if you're watching this video, it, it, it's probably already been listed on my website. So if you're interested, take a look. Otherwise, um, I'm thinking I'm thinking Friday, I should have the rest of them knocked out. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. And until next time, have a good one. Why?